I hope you're ready for a wonderful pina colada recipe today boys and girls because we have this beauty here in front of me which it's a clarified pina colada but there's a twist to it. First of all it's called tepache colada because it's made with tepache as we're using the whole pineapple for it and second you have a coconut foam on top of it. So if you're new to the channel and if you just stumble upon the channel don't forget Click the subscribe button so you don't miss any fancy recipes like that. But otherwise, as always, if you're ready for some shakes, tears and sips, let me show you how to make this wonderful tepache colada pre bache and get it ready in your fridge so you can enjoy during the weekend. See you soon. Okay, lots going on today. So we're going to make first the pina colada, then we're going to create the foam on the top. Yes. You hear me right, we're doing a foam, coconut foam. The pina colada is going to be clarified. Now I have to mention here that you don't have to clarify at all, okay? That's just me liking to give myself a hard time, okay? So soon I come to the clarification process, if you feel like, uh, oh, forget it, I'm done, I'll just drink as it is. Feel free to batch it and drink it as it is. But if you feel a little bit more adventurous and like me, like to give yourself a hard time experiment or make mess in your kitchen, bar or whatever you are, keep following with the clarification. So first what we're gonna need, it's a fresh pineapple juice. Everything today is gonna be fresh. So we're gonna make a fresh pineapple juice. We're gonna use fresh lime juice. And of course, uh, something which is really important in this pina colada is the homemade tepache, okay? So why are we doing tepache? Well, we don't throw the pineapple at all, yeah? We're doing sustainable things here. So we're gonna make the juice from the pineapple pulp, but we're not gonna throw the peel because it will be turned to a tepache. And if you want to learn how to make tepache, as always, make sure you check Mixology Hacks, my second channel, where is a dedicated video what we're doing from this pineapple peel to create this wonderful, delicious tepache, okay? Today, we're just going to get the peel on the side, which is gonna turn to tepache, of course, because I don't like throwing things and I love having a nice tepache, okay? So this is pretty much, there is a few more things, but they'll come alongside the video so without further ado and don't waste too much time because we have a lot to do we're gonna start with our pineapple first thing first we don't need these leaves make sure if it's any good leaves here inside when you pull them out like that just wipe them a little bit save some of them put them in the zip bag put them in the freezer and use them as a garnish for your pina coladas staying in the freezer they can stay pretty much indefinite okay and you can always have fresh nice garnish now, with the pineapple to clean, obviously fairly easy, just cut the top and the bottom. I mean, if you have other way of cleaning your pineapple, just ignore my instruction and do it as you like. But this is how I do it. Make sure you have a little pot on the side to put the peel. So when you're peeling the pineapple, if you're doing a tepache, make sure you leave at least some of the pulp inside. So don't try to follow the pineapple. I'll leave a little bit of the pit inside because you're gonna need it for the tepache, okay? So let's just clear it up quickly. Now again, uh, I know you may don't wanna get fresh pineapple and you don't want to juice it because you don't have the right equipment, which is absolutely fine. If you go to the shop and buy pineapple juice, make sure you buy juice which is not from concentrate, okay? Do me a favor, stop buying these juices. Use something real, so something which is cold press, okay? But it's nothing better than a fresh pineapple. So cut your pineapple like that and depends on the machine you're using. You can cut it in the small sticks so it can fit inside or in a cubes. Whatever is the machine you're using, whatever it's best for you, okay? I'm just gonna chop it quickly like this. There you go. That should do the job for me. Let's clean my hands and move to the next stage to juice the pineapple. 
So I'm using a very old machine, but it's still working and who cares? As far as it's working, that's the most important thing. Let's start juicing. There we go. Nearly done. I'm gonna quick reset and clear up the stage and I'll be back with the pre-batching process. Okay, my lovely friends, everything is reset. We have the lovely pineapple here. So let's just pour and see what we have as a quantity because it depends on the pineapple, you're gonna decide on how much of the spirit you're gonna use. So you may decide to squeeze five pineapples, I don't know. So we have uh, 300 mil, yeah. 300 mil, which is fantastic, more than enough what I need, and now it's time for the booze. For the rum, I'm gonna use Havana Club rum. Uh, I like it, it's fresh, it's bright. The next ingredient is the Kalani coconut liqueur. So it's quite good to use if you can find Kalani, because first of all it's 30 ABV, which is quite strong for a liqueur, but also it's absolutely fantastic. And for many of you, you know Pina Colada, uh, have coconut cream or some cases people use coconut water. We are gonna skip this step today because we're gonna use this liqueur, but also we're gonna add a little bit of the Briotet coconut liqueur. So we have a lot of coconut going in and we are doing coconut foam. So really no need of coconut water or a cream here, okay? So directly here, we have 300 ml of the pineapple juice. So, I'm gonna go with 120 ml of Havana Club. Okay. We're gonna go with 60 ml of the coconut liqueur, the Kalani. Now you may think it's gonna be a little bit boozy, but yes, it's a lovely pina colada, which it needs to have a little kick. And that's why I'm doing the clarification, because when we clarify this, we're gonna mellow down the taste and it's gonna be absolutely delicious to drink. However, I wanna remind you again, if you're not bothered about clarification, once we batch this, you can just put it in the bottle and you're ready to go, okay? But maybe try at least once to clarify and see how you feel. And we're gonna go with one ounce of the Briotet coconut liqueur. So to clarify it and for original pina colada, you know, you know you, you have a little bit of zestiness inside. So you can use fresh lime juice. No, you can, you have to use fresh lime juice. So in this case, I'm gonna use around two ounces of the lime juice. And for the sweetener, like an extra sweet element, I'll be not using any sugar syrup, anything like that. I'll be using agave nectar. Bring a little bit, this kind of a lovely flavor from the agave, which you're not gonna associate with pina colada ever, but trust me, it works fantastic. There you go. So this is one ounce as well of the agave nectar. Okay, we're nearly ready. We have one more ingredient to go before we start clarifying. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna use the whole fruit here. So this is the tepache made from the peels, which we just discard, obviously not this one, a pineapple before, because I always make tepache here in this house. And because we have 300 ml of the pineapple juice, we're gonna do exactly the same amount of the tepache. So I'm gonna bring one of my big guns here, another bottle. Uh, it's a little bit chilled because it was in the fridge with something else, but I realized this pot is not big enough, so I need to do something about it. And there you go, we're gonna start with 300 ml. So I'm gonna pour six of this and be back. Wonderful, there you go. Six measures, the pashe in. We're gonna transfer this to the bottle. You want everything to mix nicely together. Fabulous. 
And as I mentioned before, here you can close this bottle, put it in the fridge and you're ready to drink, okay? You don't need to clarify, but I like to make my life harder and I like to have some kind of a, you know, fun. So I'm gonna clarify, I will be putting inside around 50 to 70, 80 ml of milk. It's not really any particular measure, it's just fill it up a little bit. Wonderful. Give it a little gentle stir and as you can see this is gonna curdle straight away which is gonna help us to clarify all this mixture and make a more clear splendid pina colada. So leave this to rest for another 10-15 minutes and then you can start clarifying. Okay my friends it starts slowly kind of separating the milk is going on the top so we want to start with the clarification. For this you're gonna need a good coffee filter, a big pot of course and a patient, a little time. So I'm using this kind of, I call them industrial coffee filters, they are not, but they're like for a big coffee machines when, <clears throat> you know, you go somewhere on a festival or something, you get these big coffee machines. Uh, fabulous coffee filters because they're very uh, strong, they don't break easy, but they are also, the thickness of them, it's very good for clarification because it's allowing the liquid to go a little bit faster than the normal home. Uh, coffee filter. If you can't find them obviously you just need a little bit more patience. So first what we're gonna do before I actually stick the coffee filter like a permanent I will put a little bit of the mix and just leave it to start clarifying slowly. The reason why it's, I'm doing this is because I want uh, a little bit of the milk to act as a filter as well. Okay? So we're gonna do that, we're gonna leave it for a little bit, as I say it's a patient game so don't expect to be fast that, that's why I said if you're not bothered of clarification just batch your pina colada as it was and just leave it in the fridge and you're ready to go. So once I have a few drops and coated the filter, I'm gonna put back the clear liquid here, it's only a few drops to be honest, but now I can get the filter stuck proper to the pot. In my case I'm using like an elastic band because I said this filter is strong but obviously the liquid is heavy so when you put more it may push the filter down and you don't want that. You just want it to keep it nice and steady. And here we go. I'm gonna give it a quick nice mix so I can have more liquid and I'm gonna leave it to clarify as long as you need, okay? So I'm gonna leave this on the side, there you go. Grab my other pot which I used earlier, have a second filter because why not? We're gonna use the whole clarification to keep going. Just give it a little more in. There we go. and put everything to start clarifying proper. I don't think I'm gonna put elastic band here because the filter is strong enough to keep it, but as you can see it's already clarifying. However, because this one doesn't have the first kind of a drop of milk and then replacing, I wanted to show you the difference. See how clean is that and how is this? So, it's entirely up to you. For me, when I clarify everything, I may do another clarification to be completely clear or I may leave it as it is, but that's really entirely up to you how clear you want your pina colada to become. I will try to clarify as much as I can, okay? So I'm ready and while we're clarifying this and waiting for it, we're gonna go do the coconut foam. Okay, let's put this on the side. Fabulous. So for the coconut foam, you're gonna need a full fat coconut milk, basically one tin, which is what, around 400 ml or something like that, grams, whatever they call it. This one here, it's exactly 400 ml, so it's probably 400 grams, okay? 
You're gonna need some agave nectar, of course, some sweetener. You're going to need vanilla. I will use a vanilla paste. I find it much better. It's very quick to infuse and it's so easy to use. And of course, it's cheaper than actual vanilla pots, okay? And finally, we are going to need a xanthan gum. Simple as that. Now, the coconut milk, it should be in the room temperature. So don't boil it, don't warm it up, nothing. Just keep it as a room temperature. And uh, if you have a blender, make sure you prep it in your blender. But if you don't have a blender, you can use uh, one of these hand blenders if you don't have blender like that. I love this blender because obviously it's with removable motor on the top, so I can just use it as it is. We're gonna pour the coconut milk inside. There we go. Beautiful. Vanilla paste, half a bar spoon or a half a teaspoon, whatever you have, that's all you need just to bring this lovely flavor of vanilla. Okay, I'll leave this on the side. Agave nectar, uh, this is personal preference. So I'll be eyeballing this, I'll go probably around like an ounce, or I may go a little bit more. I like to have some sweetness in the coconut foam because otherwise it's, you know, coconut doesn't really taste much like in sweetness. So just gonna do it like, a, yeah, that'll be enough. And xanthan gum, you need around one gram 50, one gram 40, one gram 50. So if you have one of these micro scale, it's a good job uh, to actually have it because this basically measure very small amounts. Uh, with a normal kitchen scale, it's not gonna work, guys. Especially when it comes to xanthan gum and uh, this kind of a powder ingredients, you gotta be very precise. So we're gonna go with, that's 120, 160. Okay, I said 150, but hey, uh, it'll be fine. So basically the xanthan gum, what it's doing, it's, uh, it's a thickener. Let's put it that way, a very, very simple explanation. It's used to thicken sauces and things which needs, uh, which is more kind of a runny and needs a little bit thickness. Also, it's helping to don't crystallize sugar syrups and it's basically fantastic. So be careful obviously with the measurements because if you're using it too much, it could oversweet things. But in our case, 160, it will be absolutely fantastic. Let's blend it. Beautiful. Okay. All right, put this on the side. I'm running out of uh, space where I can put things. I mean, I have enough space, just not enough place to put dirty stuff. Now, I need my canister. There you go, we're gonna transfer. You see how thick it is when I'm pouring now. That's just because of the xanthan gum. Have a look. How thick it is, yeah? I'm having a hard time here, guys. This is something which I didn't talk about in the beginning. But we are nearly there. There we go. Everything is in. Let's give it another quick wipe. And we are ready to close. So once I close it, now I just need to check because my press, it's a icy press, uh, but it's also for like a nitrogen, depends if you're using fruits and have different compartments inside. For me, I don't want them because for the foam which I'm gonna use, this is gonna be very hard to go through. This is more about uh, if you're using it for the nitro coffee or things like that. So it depends what you have. If you so if you do have your usual icy press, you won't have these uh, things inside. 
Now you can charge it with CO2 or you can charge it with nitrogen, with nitrogen gas. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna charge it with the nitrogen gas. And I'll, at the moment of time, I'll be using just one of the canister, just so I can see how it's gonna perform. And when I, when I test it, if I feel like I need a second one, I will do second one. Okay, give it a little shake. And you're gonna put this in the fridge to chill and be ready. So soon your cocktail is uh, clarified, you can bottle it and this is gonna be ready for serving. It's simple as that. Okay, boys and girls, once you have the clarification done and your foam is in the fridge for about a few hours, you're ready to serve your pina colada. Now, this is the best of clearness you can get because we're using tepache. You can get it more clear if you want, but this is gonna involve to use agar agar and doing more complicated clarification, which I don't think it's necessary at the moment. However, it's entirely up to you. I'm happy with the result. Everything is clarified, so let's serve it. Get your Collins glass or a high bowl or a hurricane, whatever you decide to serve. There's two choices. If you're fancy of a pina colada with a pebble ice or a crushed ice, fill it up with crushed ice, then foam on the top. I prefer, because of the foam, to use just a normal cubed ice, and that's what we're gonna do. Fill up your glass with ice to the top. There's no measurements here, it depends on the glass, how big it is. That's how much pre batch pina colada you're gonna pour inside. There you go. I'm gonna grab one more. Fabulous. And let's top up. A beautiful, refreshing, fridge ready pina colada. Leave some space on the top, of course, because we need to put our wonderful coconut foam. Beautiful, it's thick, it's proper, you can actually eat it with a spoon, that's all it is. Because obviously we're using only xanthan gum and the coconut milk, it's already kind of a thick because it's a full fat, you'll be absolutely fine. Fabulous. And finally to finish it, just two of the pineapple froth or leaves or whatever you call it. And then you have it, my friends, the tepache colada, like I like to call it, because it's made with tepache. Have a wonderful weekend, go get uh, messy in the kitchen, make some clarified pina colada with the coconut foam, pre-batch a few bottles, enjoy the weekend and have fun. For me, I'm gonna have that, get my luggage done and get ready to take off all the way to the Portugal to enjoy a week off and I'll see you next week or maybe week after depends how I feel with another video but until then as always I love you and I leave you bye bye